Can one plant change the way we see nature and design? At least I think so. See, the plant we're gonna talk about today really blows the lines between nature and design. So today we're talking about an ancient plant, the platycerium or the staghorn fir. Now the word platycerium comes from Greek origin, meaning flat and horn. I'm sure you can understand why. These are ancient plants and are truly living sculptures. I've even added some to my shelf today just for this video. Now we're going to discuss the architecture of these plants, what makes them special. We're going to analyze them and understand the components or the structures that make up the plant. And we're going to go into a little bit of the varieties that you get. What can you expect from sort of propagation, textures, you know, growth habits and care keeping, that kind of thing. See, platyceriums or staghorn ferns are broken up into two parts. The basal frond or the shield frond, that sort of flat base that it has, and the fertile frond or those antler-like leaves that you see. So the basal frond's primary function is to protect the rhizome, the root structure. Its second function is to capture water or sort of water collection and water maintenance because it surrounds the root structure it creates that sort of closed environment where the roots can really thrive see these grow wide and out and lay against each other and through maturity can create a fan-like structure basically creating a bowl that can capture water see the tops of mature staghorn ferns at their basal frond has like these notches these notches are like fingers that reach out to capture sort of any dew or rainfall that comes through and guides it to the rhizome or the root system. And one thing to know about the shield frond, it really doesn't change much as the plant matures. Sure, it's fanning out gets a bit more prominent and it gets a bit wider, but its structure doesn't really change. And this structure can exhibit textures like a leathery texture or a very furry, fuzzy texture they're a pale light green as they sort of emerge and they eventually brown out as they get older and as they sort of brown out the new shield frond will also start then emerging the structural leaf takes a while to grow and sort of wrap around the plant and it's it's quite easy and nice to see that gradual enclosing that it does and it happens in stages and if you keep these plants it's it's really cool to see because it doesn't happen as much or its growth is a lot slower than the antler fronds so it's really something to note it's a big part about keeping them is can you get that shield front to be perfectly round against the base it's something that really adds to that artistic slash sculptural you know housekeeping of these plants can we get a like for this beautiful new leaf and the amazing fertile fronds or antler fronds. See, their primary function is repro reproduction because they produce spores. And because they're part of the polypodiaceae family, they reproduce via spores. Remember, they're ferns. Okay, so these fronds, as they mature, they develop spores on the underside of the leaves that kind of look like a cinnamony, brown, rusty kind of dust. Now these spores are meant for reproduction and it's kind of complicated. So basically the spores fall off, they get wet, they turn into something that then germinates and, be germinates and becomes some sort of sporite structure. And then that slowly becomes um, a plant. It's like a two-step process. Here's a diagram. See these fronds are feathery and they reach out, creating a lot of movement and motion. And I think the sculptural key word I can say here is definitely motion, right? With a bit of wind, with a bit of movement, it really gives the structure or the plant that X factor. See, this is a Willinkii and it has really long, thin, dainty fronds. And you can see it's just swaying in the wind all the time. And this is not a mature plant yet. Now there are a ton of varieties of these plants and it really makes them so special. 
In fact, there is a subsection in the variety that are known as the Giants. This is primarily the Superba and the Grande. And luckily I have both of those. They're still little babies, but let me show you what they look like. See, these are big, majestic, and are almost throne-like. They can get up to about three meters in size. It, it does take like 20 years to get there, but nevertheless, they have that potential and that's such an awesome thing. See, now that we've covered the big ones, or at least some of them, your more common types are your bifurcatum. That is like your common staghorn fern. This is mine. I've had it the longest out of all, all of them. And you can see these little structures below. These are pups. So some staghorn ferns um, can propagate themselves and the sort of pup propagation, you simply cut these away and you have yourself a whole nother plant. Quite awesome, but not every plant can do this, right? There's the Platycerium hands, this excellent one here, and you can actually see there's already some spore production happening here on this plant. You can see that rusty color. Now, let's quickly backtrack. In terms of propagation, only when the spores are mature are they viable, right? How do we know if it's a if it's a mature spore? It's hard to say. Is when the leaf starts to die, sort of when that leaf is at its age, you know, it's ready to slowly start withering away. You'll notice that the spores go really reddish and like a rusty color. That's when you know that the spore is mature, right? So that's when you're going to harvest it. You simply scrape that off. And there's a ton of videos out there. Go watch them. It's a lot of fun. It takes ages, but I would definitely try my luck if you have some on your hands. See, so do you notice this silvery texture that's on the underside of the leaf? Now, those are called trichomes. They're like a little hairs that the plant has. They serve a, a lot of functions, but primarily it's like protection against sort of pests and the sun that sort of thing. They also absorb water and are like moisture sponges. See, what's special about these antler fronds is that as the plant gets older, the shapes of these change and some of them have a curl in it, some of them like reach differently. So as the plant gets older, the structure of these fronds changes over time and really showcases this ever-changing beautiful sculpture. Guys, thanks for watching the video. I hope that you learned something. I hope that you are ex ex I hope you're excited about these plants. They're really rising in popularity. 